Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. Welcome back to Fanboy Fridays. Fanboys. Now you see now, you done fucked up, you know that, don't you? I said, <laughs> you know I, no, I, I thought. No, so, you know what I'm saying? You done fucked up now, you know that, don't you? <laughs> All right. It is time to get back to it. My people, we have not had the fanboy files for a couple of weeks. But here we are, 2024, and we are back at it, uh, crushing some dreams, breaking some hearts, and uh, breaking down these fanboy narratives that are completely ridiculous, that are media-driven, and that, uh, you know, is pretty much the only thing these fanboys live for is to defend their king. But before we get into it, I want to thank everyone who participated in the poll from this week, which was a question simply, do you think LeBron James will play at least 60 games this season? And no uh, was the overwhelming majority with 73%. And I don't think it's really any reason for anyone to think otherwise. The guy has not played 60 games within the last five years. So without further ado, let's get into this. Fanboy number one. This comes from my video that I put out today that the cat is out of the bag about LeBron James paying people to call him the GOAT. Fanboy number one says, Jordan is not even top five. Never leads anything in stats. He was just a damn scorer. At Uncommon Sense with seven 100 emojis. <laughs> After it. Uh, fanboys like this... Um, I really don't know what you guys want me to say when you just say stuff that's clearly you hadn't put any thought into. Uh, clearly is ridiculous. Fanboy. Uh, Michael Jordan always leads in the polls about who is the GOAT. Like, what more do you want? To, to say he's not even top five, you know, um, you, you're just in your feelings. You're just in your feelings, and I imagine you would be because I see that you watch my channel a lot, and my job is to hurt your feelings. So, you know, uh, I don't know what to tell you. That That is just the most ridiculous thing. Yes, Jordan doesn't lead in any longevity stats. He doesn't lead in any all-time stats. But he does lead in a lot of per-game stats. And especially, he leads your king in a lot of per-game stats, which is the direct comparison of who's doing what on a nightly basis, fanboy. Now, um, I'm, I'm trying to really not, uh, well, you know what it is. Uh, you, you guys are special. You know, I, I was really trying to give you guys the benefit of the doubt last year and say that, hey, you know, maybe you guys are just, you know, have been so brainwashed by the media, but people who typically get brainwashed are special. I and mean, you, you know what I mean by special. Uh, so that, that is my only assumption is that, you guys are special and just truly uh, not capable of uh, comprehending certain things. Uh, you know, either that or you're just so obsessed with your king that you will literally do and say anything, even when it makes no sense at all. Fanboy, I have never seen one media person not have Michael Jordan in his top five. I have never met one person in real life to not have Michael Jordan in, in the top five. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I think we spent enough time on this. Uh, fanboy, uh, like I said, just get prepared for when your king retires and you're going to have to detox yourself uh, when the truth start coming out. So, you know, get ready for that. Let, let's move on. All right, fanboy number two. And he starts his uh, post off with six laughing emojis. <laughs> Yay for you, fanboy. Okay, he says, Jordan and Kobe fans don't like stats because stats are the actual facts. 
and proves in the debate how great the player actually was. Looking better while doing the same thing don't make you better. Sorry, that's why y'all hate stats. They prove Bron the best. Well, fanboy, uh, I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of credit to understand that, yes, Jordan does look a lot better than LeBron James playing. That, that, that is a fact. You got that part right, fanboy. G give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, other than that, fanboy, uh, you, you would have to understand basketball to understand that all 30 points aren't created equal. Equal. To understand that all 10 rebounds aren't created equal. To understand that uh, all assists aren't created equal. I mean, just the fact that you make a statement like that lets me know that you don't even understand how the rules have changed over the years. Do you understand, fanboy, that assists nowadays are much more lenient than the assists of previous days? You don't understand that. You don't understand that players now get to actually catch the ball and make two or three dribbles and still have it count as assist for the other person, whereas back in the day, that pass had to lead directly to a score. You couldn't do anything in between that. You had to catch and score. That's what made for an assist. A uh, fanboy, you don't understand that, I, that the game is much easier offensively, so all 30 points aren't created equal. And even within the fact that the game has been made to be, be easier... Even within that, there's still nuances about how and when you score. LeBron James gets a lot of his points in insignificant times in the game. I know you don't get that. Again, fanboys, <laughs> look, it, it's come to this. I, I realize that you guys are special, and, and, and you know what I mean when, when I say special. You guys are special, so I, I really, at this point, truly just... I don't expect you guys to grasp certain things. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to just end by saying this. Fanboy, uh, when you take per game stats and you take per game analytics, Michael Jordan destroys your king in most of them. And the funny thing is, analytics weren't even a big thing back in Jordan's day. Yet he still destroys your king in most analytics when we're talking about on a per-game basis. Now, if you are happy that your king has been able to play at a mediocre level for a long time, well, yay for you, fanboy. If that is what you value in life is subpartness for a long time, well then, congratulate your king. And fanboy, I'm sure you on your way to that same trajectory in life. You're probably going to be very me mediocre for a long time. <laughs> All right, fanboys, I told you, it's getting worse for you. It's time to ramp it up on you. Let's move on. Okay, I don't really know if I should address this or not, but we'll read it. He wrote it, so we'll read it. Fanboy number three simply says, starting with a laughing emoji, uh, when fanboys call other fanboys as a derogatory term, Okay, uh, fanboy, um, I don't know what you hope to accomplish by taking the time out to write that in my comments. Other than, I guess you wanted to end up on the fanboy file. So, uh, yay for you. You made it. Uh, but let, let me tell you this. I've said this, and I, I made another video about this. The, the problem is, is there really aren't Michael Jordan fanboys. Now, I'm not going to say there's not any because I'm sure... There are probably fanboys and girls of any person famous, any athlete, so to speak, of notoriety. I'm sure they exist. But Michael Jordan fans, on the whole, aren't fanboys. And, and it's easy to see because Michael Jordan fans don't get offended when you say Michael Jordan is not the GOAT. Most Michael Jordan fans respect all of the older players. Why? Because Michael Jordan himself respected all of the older players. Most Michael Jordan fans are simply trying to hold people to a standard. Now, your king likes to diminish older players. He's done it. Therefore, you followers 
you also like to diminish the older player, players. Your king is okay with shortcuts. Therefore, people who support that are also okay with the shortcuts that that person takes. Your king is okay with cheating. Flopping is cheating. I, I'm, I'm going to say this over and over again. Let, let's stop. Let, let, when, we, when you say flopping, make sure you say it's cheating. Because trying to trick the referee into seeing something that didn't happen is cheating. There's no way around it, fanboys. So therefore, if you support that, you also support cheating. Uh, so yes, uh, being a LeBron James fanboy is a derogatory term because it's about what you guys support and represent. You guys support and represent a guy who has no integrity for the game of basketball. Period. You can't get around it. Anyway, let, let's move on. Fanboys, y'all y'all got to come up with something better. I mean, it, it's getting to the point now to where now y'all not really just saying anything. Now now you just uh, name calling and, you know, which, uh, you know, that's what happens when you actually don't have anything to back up your case. I, uh, fanboys, let before we move on, let, let me just give you a piece of advice. If 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 the only thing you can do is call someone a hater and, and call them names and say, LeBron James is definitely better than Michael Jordan without having any real uh, explanation of why you feel that way, that is because you have a weak case to stand on. So, you know, if you guys want to continue writing in my comments, I suggest you actually sit down and, and think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying so that, you know, so that you just don't look ridiculous. I mean, I mean, seriously. Okay, but anyway, let's move on. All right, fanboy number four says, Sports Illustrated started calling LeBron James King during his high school years. LeBron James didn't start the great GOAT debate. That was sports media. And people like yourself joined in on the conversation. Why would he need to pay someone to compliment him? A new year and you're on the same old LeBron story. Sounds ridiculous. Okay, uh, fanboy number four. Let, let's just start. Let's go through this. So he says, Sports Illustrated started calling LeBron James King James during high school. Yes, you are correct, fanboy. And what does that have to do with the fact that LeBron James sat up on his own podcast and said, that one right there made me the go. What does that have to do with LeBron James getting his wife to uh, bring him up as the GOAT during the SP speech? What does that have to do with the many times LeBron James is on record as calling himself the GOAT? Yes, maybe Sports Illustrated started the hype, the media started the hype, but LeBron James bought into it hook, line, and sinker. LeBron James has been coddled, has had his head blown up since he was in high school. The problem is, is he let it ruin him as a man. Or maybe I should say as a boy, because he still likes to refer to himself as the kid from Akron. Like, it has stunted his growth. And because of all the hype he got when he was young, like, he started to believe it. The problem is, is he didn't work to actually make it true. And, and, and then I'm going to say this. When you start hearing the same thing about a person over and over again, when there's been people in the media suggest that LeBron James pays people to call him the GOAT, when there's been players who suggests that LeBron James pays people to call him the GOAT when fans start to suspect that, hey, uh, we've seen multiple people over the years flip-flop. One minute they're saying Michael Jordan is the GOAT or someone else the GOAT, and the next minute they're saying LeBron James is the GOAT, and then it comes out that, oh, this person is working for Clutch Sports now. Or I should say Unclutch Sports. Uh, forgive me, I should never say clutch sports. It's, it's unclutch sports. Uh, this person is working for unclutch sports now. Uh, these things aren't a coincidence, fanboy. So, yes, 
in theory, it sounds ridiculous. I agree with you. It sounds ridiculous that someone would have to pay people to call them the GOAT. But when you have an ego that big and a need to be praised, when when your goal in basketball, see, we're about to get sidetracked for a minute. When your goal in basketball was to be known as the GOAT instead of to become the greatest basketball player you could be. And this is why what your intentions are are so important. What your intentions are are so important because if you go into something saying, it doesn't matter what it is. Maybe it's a musician. Again, maybe it's a computer programmer. But when you go into it saying, uh, I want to be the greatest musician of all time versus I want to be able to play music to the best of my ability. I want to maximize my ability to play music. Those are two different mindsets that will grant you Two different outcomes. LeBron James wants to be the GOAT. So he spends all his time trying to make people believe he's the GOAT versus spend all his time working on his basketball game to become the best basketball player he could be. And from that, he may have actually earned a place in the GOAT conversation. So fanboy, yes, it seems ridiculous, but again, When you keep hearing the same things about people, there has to be some truth to it. And last but not least, this (laughs) fanboy says, uh, New Year and you're on your same old LeBron story. Sounds ridiculous. Uh, Fanboy, LeBron James is on his same story in the New Year. LeBron James is doing the same thing he's always done. And I have said on this channel, As long as LeBron James is playing basketball, as long as people like you and the unclutched sports and the mainstream media is trying to tell us things that aren't true, I will be right here doing the same thing. So, fanboy, uh, don't expect anything different. Let, 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 Let me go ahead and tell you that. Don't expect anything different. Know that every time you're on my channel it's a good chance that you're going to hear some criticism about LeBron James that you don't like. It's probably going to make your stomach turn. It's probably going to, you know, make you sad. You know, it might ruin your day. But, you know, it's the truth. It's something you got to get used to. Anyway, let's move on. We'll we'll do one or two more here since this this is the first time back in a while. Okay, this actually came from the poll I put up a week or two ago, and that was could the 2013 Miami Heat beat the 1992 New York Knicks? And this fanboy says, what are y'all smoking? And he says, revolution. I think he mean evolution. Evolution of the league alone will allow the 2013 Heat to win. Uh, Fanboy, again, when you make statements like that, to me, you just so that you know nothing about basketball at all. You know nothing about the 1992 New York Knicks and how tough that team. Uh, first of all, I didn't even specify uh, what era we're playing in. And let me tell you that if we're playing in 90s rules, the 2013 Heat will not beat the New York Knicks. Simply because they were led by LeBron James, who is weak. Dwayne Wade decided to turn the team over to LeBron. And even though it was Dwayne Wade who had that championship experience, any LeBron-led team is weaker. Dwayne Wade gave up his place as the leader of that team. So a team led by LeBron James is going to be hard-pressed to beat any of the great teams in the 90s, especially if we're playing 90s rules. How can the guy who the the big bigger, stronger, faster, you know, 260-pound flopper, flopping all over the place, whining and crying, how can he compete in a league where, and you know, again, this this whole bigger, stronger, faster, uh, that doesn't matter when you're soft at heart. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> I just said that, fanboys. Your king is soft at heart. The bigger, stronger, faster thing does not matter when you are soft at heart. And when you're talking about being in one of the most competitive eras, 
Just because the 2013 Heat had a lot of great talent on it, that does not make them a shoe in for the win. Is uh, like I said, I believe playing 90s rules, the New York Knicks is going to beat that 2013 team, hands down. LeBron James is just not a competitor, competitor like that. Period. So anyway, fanboy, uh, yeah, you know, uh, again, you know, please, please do some research before you respond on my videos. That would be greatly appreciated. We're going to do one more. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this comes from my winning must not be important to LeBron James. And I made this video because I uh, can't remember what game it was now. Because after the game and, and LeBron James lost, he proceeded to uh, immediately congratulate the other team with a big smile on his face. I mean, he, he really looked like his day was going fantastic, like right after he just lost. And, and I've said this uh, on previous videos. That is like one of my biggest pet peeves about LeBron James and really about this generation in general, but it, it starts with LeBron and LeBron does it a lot. It's the, the disrespect of the seriousness of winning. It's like Kobe Bryant would not be smiling after a loss. Michael Jordan would not be smiling after a loss. Larry Bird would not be smiling after a loss. So for him to just look like, oh, you know, it's the great, greatest day ever. Huh, I think I got my stats in and so, you know, they can't blame anything on me, so life is good. Anyway, so this is why I made the video. And fanboy, I can't remember. It was four, five, six. Again, all of you have the same number because you're all the same. Uh, I, I really need to start just reading it, just calling you all fanboy number one. But anyway, fanboy, I think it's number five, says you're being emotional because he didn't react the way you expected. You're not wrong for that. You're a fan. But it's okay he doesn't live on guilt like most people. It's a loss. Doesn't make you a loser. <laughs> doesn't make you a loser in general. A smile doesn't mean you're not serious. It can mean you're still confident moving forward. He had a bad game. Big deal. A lot of people think being angry changes the future performance, but it takes logic away. Fanboy, judging by this uh, comment you just made, you can't be doing good in, in whatever it is you do. <laughs> whatever it is you do in life, I, I, you, you got to be pretty mediocre at it. I, I mean, okay, so let, let's go through this. He starts off saying, you're being emotional because he didn't react the way you expected. Uh, fanboy, uh, I assure you, I have no emotions tied to LeBron James at all. I am a fan of basketball. I am a fan of holding people to a certain standard. And more importantly, I am a fan of uh, these players understanding that the only reason that you're in this position is because of the fans. The only reason you're allowed to make uh, the kind of money that you do is because of the fans. And because of that, you owe it to the fans to give your very best at all time. So no, it is not about him reacting the way uh, I expected, but no matter how he reacted, uh, smiling is an inappropriate uh, response if you are serious about winning. There's no way around that. See, we live in this day and age where people try to justify everything and, and people try to, again, like I talked about confidence. People think uh, just saying you're confident make it so. Or people think that being cocky is just displaying your confidence. People think that saying, oh, I'm the greatest and I'm this, I'm that, is just showing confidence. No, that's actually showing your insecurity. But again, you know, people try to justify things and however they need to do it to make themselves feel better. So anyway... He says, but it's okay. He doesn't live on guilt like most people. Uh, it is not about guilt. You don't have to feel guilty that you lost, but you should not feel glad that you lost. Fanboy, I don't even understand why. Why? 
how I'm having to explain this to you. You can uh, not feel guilty without being happy that you lost, especially right after the game. I can see if it was hours later, you know, when he's had time, but directly after a loss, it's like it's, it's no big deal. Fanboy, please. Again, I'm sure whatever you do in life, you, you have to be mediocre at it. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. K case in point. He says, it's a loss. It doesn't make you a loser in general. That's true in general, but right in that moment, you were the loser. R right in that moment, fanboy. Do, do you, you do understand that. Uh, right after the game... Whoever has the <laughs> highest amount of points is the winner, and whoever has the lowest amount of points is the what? Say it with me. Is the loser. Yes, it directly, <laughs> it directly makes you a loser, fanboy. Right in that moment, in, in that moment of being a loser, you are smiling. Can, do, do you understand now, fanboy? It, it, it's, it's making more sense to you. All right, let, let's, uh, and he says, a lot of people think being angry changes their future performance, but it takes logic away. A uh, fanboy, first of all, that's a blanket statement that's just not true in all the time. And again, it's not about being angry. You, you act like just because you're not smiling that you have to be angry about it. No, it's not about being angry. It's about not being happy. Right in that moment as you just lost. But again, you know, I, I'm, what, what, what are we doing here? Fanboy files, uh, y'all fanboys, you, you guys must realize that, that you are just entertainment at this point. That, that we all realize that you guys have no logic, you know. Uh, you guys, I don't even know how to construct points. Uh, you say stuff like this, and like I said, it, that just lets me know that whatever it is that you do in your life, you probably mediocre at it. But okay, you know, I'm not here to uh, try to convince you. I'm just here to expose the ridiculousness that you guys say. So fanboys, look, New Year, uh, I've told you over and over again, you say ridiculous stuff in my comments. Uh, you will wind up on the fanboy files, but not just that. Like We're, we're going to start adding to the fanboy files. Uh, to make them more entertaining uh, for the people who have logic and, you know, and, and like to laugh at you guys. We're, we're going to do that. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. All right.